Today I'm going to show you how to get Nintendo DS emulation up and running on RetroArch, so let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get RetroArch installed if you haven't already done so. I'm just going to do a quick recap here instead of always sending you guys back to the PlayStation videos. So you're going to go to RetroArch.com, you're going to go to download, you're going to go down to the bottom of this list and choose Nightly Builds. Nightly builds always include extra features and stuff, and just, they're overall better to use than current uh, stable versions, so I always recommend going with nightly builds. Um, if you get one that happens to be broken, just go back a day or two and it should be fine. Um, so we're going to go to x86-64 under Windows, and we're going to download the RetroArch 7-zip file. And after it's downloaded and extracted, if you have some, like for whatever reason it doesn't work, you need to download this redistributable file right here. Before you run RetroArch, make sure you have it in the directory you want it in. That way you don't have to change any file directories manually later. It'll automatically set everything to what it needs to be right when you first launch it. So just make sure you have it right the first time to save yourself a ton of headache. So go ahead and boot into RetroArch. And if you have controllers, you can use those. Mouse keyboard also works. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to switch this over to full screen because... Gross. Um... So anyway, once once it's in full screen, we're going to go over to the online updater, core updater, and we're gonna go down to Nintendo DS right here. So there are three options for Nintendo DS emulation in RetroArch. Um, this is an older version of DS Mumi. I really don't know how to pronounce it, so you know what? Yeah. Uh, anyway, so. This is an older version of it, current version, and then Melon DS, which is an in-development emulator. It is unfortunately nowhere near as good as Desmumi. I don't know how to pronounce that again, so yay! It's supposed to be like a combination of DS, emulator, and emulate me kind of deal, I believe. So yeah, it's just a weird name, but whatever. So. Again, Melon DS not as good. If you want to experiment with it later, you can. Just be aware you're going to need to look at the RetroArch documentations and know how to name any BIOS files you need. You don't need any additional files to run this guy. I'm, I don't even want to pronounce its name anymore. I just, I don't want to. It's, ah. Anyway, go ahead and press enter to get it downloaded. Once you have it downloaded, press backspace and you can honestly just load up a game right there once you're done just load up your game so browse over to your directory that you have your DS games in whoops and you're good to go that is how you get uh, DS games up and running in RetroArch it's very simple and straightforward but there are a ton of extra options that we can do here so as you can see it's just defaulted to full screen um, both screens right next to each other that's not actually how DS games ran the screens were a little bit separated so on games like Metroid Prime Hunters um, if you want to have the proper screen, screen gap, you need to change some settings in RetroArch to make that look, um, to look proper. But, go ahead and press F1. And we can scroll down to our options menu over here and we can see that there are a lot of extra options. So if you happen to have the DS BIOS files available, you can make them run before a game will load. That way you're getting a more authentic experience to the real console. You get the DS boot animation and all that. Um, we could change the number of CPU cores that the, game, um, the emulator is running on. This is very useful if you happen to have a slightly weaker computer, but honestly, you shouldn't need to use more than two. So just like set it to two and you should be good. Um, and adjust internal resolution now I will tell you this if you have a weaker CPU upping your internal resolution is going to just kill your performance so the most I would recommend going up to is 1024 by 768 if your computer can even handle that mine mine will stop working at 1536 by 1152 personally so and I've got a very very strong i7 so don't uh, don't expect to be cranking this up to 2048 by 1536. So for now we're just going to go to 1024 by 768. Um, then of course you got anti-aliasing options, so you know let's crank that up, why not? Texture smoothing? Sure, let's go! 
and we're just gonna leave everything else basically the same but we are going to put that screen gap to 64 like I mentioned earlier that way we have a little bit more true to life experience here so once you have all of that finished go ahead and press F1 again and there you have it so of course, all of your DS pointer options are done with the mouse. You can set a joystick on a controller to be that, but it's not very comfortable or easy to use. I really recommend um, having your mouse at the ready for this emulator. And there you have it. As you can see, running at 1024 by 768 is killing my performance right now. This is absolutely sluggish. You hear the music crackling like, oof, oof. The more demanding your DS games get, the more higher res is going to kill them. So, we're going to go to 512 by 384. That's two times internal resolution boost, and that is where we are going to call it. Um, for this uh, as you can see much much better performance so there is a standalone version of Desmumi um, that can do internal resolutions a little bit better it is unfortunately not as good as this version though the standalone version of Desmumi and the RetroArch version are virtually identical so they they really are just the best ways to you uh, best ways to go about DS simulation so but anyway, another great thing to mess with on DS emulation is of course the shader options because there is a lot that you can mess around with here. So go ahead and go back out to your shader options and we can load some presets here. So. There is an actual specific handheld folder for shaders that you can get a lot of cool stuff on. So, see, there's like Game Boy, um, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance. And so there is a Nintendo DS one here. And if you click on that, apply changes, and go back into your game, you can see that it tries to mimic what the LCD would look like on a Nintendo DS screen. Unfortunately, this means that colors are going to be a little bit more washed out. Another thing I'd recommend doing, if you were looking for some authenticity in your DS simulation, if you wanted to make it look really uh, top-notch here, go ahead and quit out of RetroArch. And there is a handheld border shaders download that is much more accurate than the ones that are included in RetroArch. So just go ahead and go to this link, I'll have it in the description below. Click on download. Once you have it downloaded, just go ahead and get it extracted. And open up the folder, and on your RetroArch folder, we'll just uh, put that over here on the side. So in your RetroArch folder, wow. In your RetroArch folder, go ahead and open your shaders folder, and just kind of drag this guy in here. I'm just gonna put it there just so it's easier for us to find. Close out of that. So now let's go ahead and open RetroArch back up. And now let's try another shader preset. So we are gonna go ahead and load a new preset from the handheld border folder we just put in. And as you can see, we have some DS specific shaders here. So we're gonna load up the DS64 2X shader. This is um, good if you have a 1080p screen. If you have a higher resolution screen, you can try out the three times or the four times. So we're gonna go ahead and load up the two times. And as you can see, it loaded up a border and it looks really cool. But the problem is that these shaders don't work quite right if you're running at a higher internal resolution. So for this one, we will need to knock it back down to native resolution. Uh, so caveat on that, but it looks really good. So even at, internal, at native resolution, I mean, so it's really not too big of a deal. As you can see, that looks really really clean and crisp so not too big of a loss to run this at native resolution to keep this border I actually really like this border this is usually how I tend to play them but as you can see we only have a little bit of the DSi uh, hinge showing here so we have to go into RetroArch's options to change this 
So go down to video, aspect ratio, change this to 16 by 9, and you're good to go. As you can see, we have the full DSi system on screen. It looks really cool. We have the LCD uh, shader in effect, so it looks really, really crisp. Um, the colors do get a little desaturated from the shader as well, but it's very accurate representation of what you got on the actual DS. If having the more vivid colors is mandatory for you, um, you can mess around with the shader and all that as well. But honestly, I really like seeing how authentic that we are able to do this in emulator. Like, this is pretty dang cool. So now if we go back into our shaders menu, I want to show you what happens if you load up one that isn't really for your screen size real quick, just so you can see what happens. So if you load up the three times scale, uh, it just gives you a little bit of clipping. Uh, it doesn't work quite right, so again, if you have a higher resolution screen, that's what those three times, four times scales are for. So if you have a 1080p screen like myself, make sure you just use the, the 2x uh, shader. So there we have it. That is all we need to do to get DS emulation up and running on RetroArch. There's really not much to it. Pretty dang straightforward. Probably one of the easiest emulators to honestly uh, get set up. It has a lot of options you can fiddle around with, but getting it up and running, not, not too bad. So there are some caveats to DS emulation, of course. It doesn't run every game that has come out for the system. Anything that is DSi enhanced is gonna lose out on those features. DSiWare is not gonna work, and DSi exclusive games are not gonna work. You're also gonna run into some issues on games like Brain Age when you need to have the screens tilted to the side. It doesn't quite do that right. Um, there's probably a way to do it. I just haven't explored it enough to see it. Um, but, but then again, there was only like four games that really did that that I ever played. Ninja Gaiden and of course Brain Age and Brain Age 2. So not too big of a deal. And again, with how simple it is, how good you can make it look, really not a deal breaker to me personally so <laughs> so thank you again for watching this tutorial very quick one today hope you got a lot out of it as always if you haven't already make sure you hit that sub button those like dislike buttons just depending on how much you like this video and we will see you all back next time if you have something you'd like to see always leave it in the comments below have a great day